YouTube. Thought I'd put together a little video on how I built this wood drying kiln. This wood drying kiln uh, has in it right now about 350 board feet of material. And uh, at this end down here, standard household dehumidifier and an auxiliary heat source. And I'm using this to bring air dried wood down to single digit moisture content so I can use it in the shop and then take it inside the house and not have to worry about it, uh, any additional shrinkage beyond that. The kiln is uh, about four feet high, I'm sorry, about three feet high on the sides. It's four feet front to back and it's 11 and a half, almost 12 feet long. My boards are nine feet, so from about here down. And then at this end down here is where the dehumidifier and such are. So I thought I'd share this with you. Uh, there's people out there that have dried wood using a household dehumidifier. I've done it, only it wasn't in anything near this nice. It was with a blue tarp wrapped around it and some moving pads for insulation. And it worked really well. So I was uh, more than happy to commit my time to build a nicer one. Uh, I can use this one repeatedly over and over. Uh, I've got it set up so I can move it in and out with my tractor when it's not in use. But this is kind of a wintertime thing for me. So uh, stay tuned and I'll show you how I do it. I have to start this video with an apology. Uh, due to the error on the part of the videographer, that would be me, the only pictures I have of the base of the kiln are two stills. So bear with me. The rest is actually moving pictures. This is a picture of the base flipped upside down. It's built with, I believe those are about three by fives. Those are the horizontals off of telephone poles. Then I put pads underneath between them that you can see on top. Those are leftover pieces of the engineered floor joists from the house we built. Then between each of the beams, I added blocking. And the blocking is there mostly again for the way I want to handle this thing, moving it with the tractor back and forth. Um, I wanted that extra rigidity. So anyways, when I flip this back over, I shim just the four spots where the, uh, the feet, I call them, sit, and she's ready to go. So the next part of this video will go into where we've got it flipped over and we start adding insulation between the beams. As you can see, I've got the bulk of the foam in now. It took about 15 minutes. This is the last piece. It's kind of some random stuff. This was about an inch thick. And I've just got it wedged in here, just a friction fit. Press it in, and down she goes. And then we'll lay the top over that. I want to specify or, or emphasize here that if you're not going to do anything where you need to heat it up enough to set pitch in pine or spruce, then I think this would be a wasted effort. Um, it would not be necessary and I wouldn't be doing it if I wasn't gonna try and set pitch in some spruce. But there you go, the next thing is we'll put the foam core board over it. This is two layers of what looks like quarter inch foam core board. I salvaged this off some pallets from a printing facility that I got pallets from, and this lays underneath paper of the same size. Now to cover the other end, I'm going to take this last sheet here, and I'll just cut it in half. Just to hold things in place, I'm going to tack it down with some button cap nails I've got. Actually, probably from the building of this barn. some bow in it, but that isn't going to matter as soon as the uh, OSB is laid on it. I'm going to screw the OSB down real tight and uh, that'll finish flattening it out. The 
this OSB was also salvaged from those same pallets. Start at this end here. Now this is what I'll actually sticker the wood up on. So I'm bringing that right out to the edge. And we'll get some screws. I changed my gloves, so I had a little bit better dexterity. These are just inch and five eighths drywall screws and Looks to be about a little half inch OSB. Everything is hung over the edges, and I'll come back and trim that off with a saw after I get these in. Okay, I've set up myself a couple layout lines that are roughly across the end of the main beams here. They're slightly different lengths, but it really makes no difference. So I'm going to cross cut this here and then down the chalk line, and we should be good. I got my saw set just barely through the material. Um, I was going to set it pretty deep and just run the blade along the outside edge, but uh, now that I have a mark, I'll just follow it. <laughs> There we go. Base is all insulated. I'm done. Pick up the scraps, dust things off, and I'll be ready to start the uh, back wall.